Avengers! Hello everyone and welcome back to Excelsior, the world's number one Marvel's Avengers podcast. I'm your director, Christian Buckley. I'm going to drain every ounce of that title out of that towel as I can in the time that remains. Joining me as always is the co-host, the Apex legend, Jack Martin. Excelsior, Christian. We are the band sinking with the ship Mm -hmm. on the Titanic. Mm Mm-hmm. Fitting, because this is the weekend of Avatar The Way of Water releasing. Indeed. I I saw that uh, Joy Clicks member Omar Nakvi is is currently in the theater right now, being awed, I'm sure, by James Cameron's newest masterpiece. Uh, Do you have any plans to see it? Yes, I do. Uh, This weekend, you know, the holidays are here, and pretty much every single holiday party I've agreed to and have been invited to is happening this weekend. So I'm going to be early next week or mid next week. I don't know, but I am stoked to see it. I cannot wait to have the future of cinema changed before my eyes. Uh, What about you? Are you planning? I know you rewatched Avatar. You talked about that last week. How did that go? I I did rewatch it. I don't have great news for you. I still think it's like a three out of five movie. That's fine. Um, That's fine. Yeah, like, I, I think it's good. I think it's a fun time. I would never choose to rewatch it uh-huh. again. But, like, you know, if we were hanging out or if I was hanging out with someone was like, hey, let's throw Avatar on, I would not, you know, make a stink about it. That Could, That's kind of how I feel about that's it. That's all I ask, Jack. That's all I ask. Because, like, the thing is, you're right. The story of that movie is a three out of five. But everything else in there, production value, I think the music is really great. Uh, the performances I think are fun, you know, like it's a fun blockbuster action thing, but I, my, my hold up with this, I think it's truly just because this was the number one, this, this one, everything since when did a movie have to be more than that to be valid? You know? Sure. Sure. That's all. That's the only thing I look at this as. Yeah. Um, I I think it's a fine movie. I think my, the biggest complaint I have with it was i could not separate sam worthington's character in this movie from alex mason in call of duty black ops Sure, (laughs) like that voice is just so iconic yeah right especially in black ops so um just re-watching avatar that's all i could think about Mm -hmm. and i'm like man it's just like generic video game character voice so that was kind of my hang up with it but you know it's i think it's very like it's impressive that that movie came out in 2009 right i'll say that i wouldn't say like i was blown away re-watching it again sure um but you know you watch a movie from 2009 and you're gonna be like oh yeah this is a 2009 movie Mm -hmm. but you watch avatar and it's like oh this movie surprisingly holds up quite well under scrutiny that's what i'm saying it influenced the last decade of blockbusters in every single way sure and certainly uh influenced the 3d trend for mm-hmm. years and i i know it's not like innovative and avatar wasn't the first to do like action comedy but i do think that there were some legit funny like goofy cartoon people in that movie like the the fucking the ceo guy from like arlington <laughs> or whatever it was mm-hmm. like uh um yeah no it, it it's a fine time definitely yeah. worth a, a rewatch if you're gonna see it which mm-hmm. i'm sure everyone on the planet's gonna see avatar too yeah um i have i i'm seeing it by myself which i haven't done in quite a while see a movie uh in the theaters by myself but i will be seeing it this sunday uh matinee showing Mm -hmm. high frame rate 3d showing Mm -hmm. so that will be interesting i think like the hobbit movies are the last time i saw a movie that was in a higher frame rate so that will be a an experience to say the least Yeah, that's fascinating because I've heard from the people who've seen it so far that he cracked it. He figured out how to do it. Um, I've never seen something in high frame rate in a theater like that before. But I will say, because I rewatched the original Avatar recently during the re-release. I went to IMAX for that. Great experience. However, I had to uh, pull down the blackout curtains and lay down for the rest of that afternoon when I came home because it gave me the worst headache in the world. Uh, um, was it, was that for 3D, you were saying? I did do 3D, creator's yeah. intent. Um, but yeah, I uh, 
I needed to lay down because it was just a lot <laughs> visually. Um, and I think high frame rate could probably help that. And honestly, I was reading some Cameron interviews. He was like, if you don't like 3D, don't see it in 3D. And I was like, you know what, man? Maybe I won't. <laughs> but I'm really curious about the high frame rate because, you know, obviously this is this is partially a video game podcast. Yeah. Uh, most gamers like all them frames. And movies are very different than video games, largely because you don't control the action of a movie. And I think that is kind of why people are like, nope, 24 frames looks looks good to us. Mm-hmm. So I'm I'm very interested to see what a movie... I know it's a not all, like every scene is high frame rate. Yeah. So I'm just kind of curious to see what that looks like. Um, I'm thinking The Mandalorian, uh, the one time where they changed the aspect ratio in season two. <laughs> That's like the only thing I can compare it to. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, this is different. Uh, so I don't know. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see how that plays out. Speaking of uh, great transitions like that, this is not transitioning the podcast. I did want to <laughs> shout out another sequence that does a transition like that. Uh, remind me, have you seen the Mission Impossible films? Yes, I have. Uh, the most recent one, Fallout, mm-hmm. there is an incredible transition to IMAX when Tom Cruise is sprinting towards a helicopter that's about to take off. Okay, is that like in the third act of the movie? Third act of the movie, timer's going down. He's he's running towards that thing, and the closer he gets to that helicopter, the bars just go away, and then it's full yeah. IMAX frame. Oh man, I completely blacked out that movie. I did see it in theaters. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm, I'm I I will do a Mission Impossible rewatch before the the inevitable next one. Hell yeah, dude! Best action movies of our time, honestly. They are they are really fantastic. You know what's not fantastic? <laughs> what's that? This week for Avengers, they're getting by. They're doing what they can. Let's crack in a Furies report. Uh, as we said last week, Triple XP is running for Captain America. Now, what's interesting is last week they said it's running for Cap and Bucky because, you know, they're kind of the same character uh, until I believe it was December 22nd. And this week, the blog just says that it's Cap. So I don't know if Bucky's also getting XP boosters, but he's the new character, I would assume. Uh, There is an error further down in the blog, which we'll get to in a minute. So maybe it is just they forgot to include Bucky. But uh, Captain America mains, get your champion XP up even higher this week uh, by playing the Cosmic Threat, because that is the highlighted event in the game currently. That's it. In terms of new stuff, so the Marketplace has some interesting things going on. Jack, what are we looking at this week? Yes, so we have Iron Man's outfit from the Avengers, which is cool. Um, Honestly, if you didn't tell me this was from the Avengers, Christian, I wouldn't have... I would have believed you. Like, I don't think that suit in my mind sticks out as particular. I think a lot of Avengers fans would probably be raising their pitchforks at me for that one but Mm -hmm. it's cool that this is an option of course yeah it's like the most generic one in the mcu to me yeah you know like it's it's whatever it's it's a high quality model in the game from what i saw as most of these mcu suits are but i'm with you uh sure the other thing that's interesting further down in the blog, and this is what I got confused by. Uh, They mentioned that this is the, like, mask-off, unmasked Captain America inspired by his look in Avengers. Yes. And I was like, hold on. If that was his suit in Avengers, I wouldn't have complained about how he looked in that movie because he's just wearing the first Avenger outfit. I think they just meant confusion it's the first avengers cap suit the world war ii one mask off and the video showcasing that suit is labeled captain america the first avenger so it was just a mistake in the blog yes but if you go down to the marketplace like screenshot it shows captain america in the avengers one suit so what is going on oh i missed that Uh, um yeah is he wearing the mask in that one though no, unmasked. Like, furthest to the left, so, like, it's one of the newer ones. You have Iron Man from Avengers. 
um, and you have like Captain America's Avengers one suit without the what mask. The- oh. Yeah, and then you have the the bundle to the right where it's like the outfit bundle of mask off, mask on, Captain America Avengers. But the video that you mentioned, which is still in the blog, is Captain America unmasked from his first movie. So now, Jack, I I might have an issue here. I own the standard Captain America from Marvel Studios, The Avengers. Me too. Do I have to pay up for this mask off Steve Rogers? I think you do. Oh, well, it's a good thing I don't own the game anymore. Right, I own it, but it's not on my console. I think you do. It it's unclear. I saw some stuff from Miller. Guess. Yeah, you would imagine. Um, they don't like. I I feel like they would have said that specifically. Like, hey, if you have the other one, um, you can just get it for free. So you know what makes me doubt that? What's that? Uh, there's also a bundle for Bucky from Captain America: The Winter Soldier from the MCU. Mm-hmm. Uh, that is more than a single outfit cost. It is not fourteen hundred; it is twenty two hundred, and it includes Bucky as he looked in Cap Two, with the mask and the goggles, with just the mask and no mask, no goggles. So I think that those are three separate skins. <laughs> not a good look. Marvel fans, is this great game I should tell you about called Fortnite. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you can mix and match. No problem in that, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Also, every single character that you get has, like, alt skins, and they're just included. Like, I when I got Spider-Man, I did have to grind in the Battle Pass to unlock these other outfits, but I unlocked the symbiote, and I just go over to Spider-Man, and I click Spider-Man, edit style, choose the symbiote one. It's the exact same character. I didn't have to pay anything extra. Hmm. Um, in a non-marvel way because that one was tied to the battle pass uh when i bought nathan drake in fortnite i it was the standard price of an of a character skin i can toggle between uncharted 4 nathan drake with arm hair and then uncharted what? movie tom holland with no arm hair <laughs> what <laughs> interest those are the two variants was the uncharted 4 versus tom holland yeah huh interesting yeah which you know, I'm glad he's in the game, but I oh, yeah. Uncharted 4 is that, that for some reason. I mean, I know why, but Uncharted 4 Nate became like the, the poster boy, Nathan Drake, you know, which is so yeah. weird because I always think of him as like at least the baseball shirt or which was never in the real game or uh, the one with the scarf from yeah. Grace Deception. Uh, Uncharted 3, I think, was like the the classic one for years, mostly yeah. because I think it was such a long period between Uncharted 3 and Uncharted 4, but. I think it was probably like the photo realism of Uncharted 4 that everyone was yeah. like, oh, yeah, this is our guy now. They love Which is that fine. fucking Green Henley, dude. <laughs> yeah, man. Um, I love Uncharted 4, though. That's my one. Yeah, that's a good one. Um, well, that's really it for Avengers this week. We'll see if there's more in the future. Um, but meanwhile... Let's start with this. This is just a fun little fact, but Iron Man was given the honor of being the first ever Marvel film and third superhero film overall inducted into the National Film Registry. Uh, This is joining the original Christopher Reeve Superman film and Christopher Nolan's The Dark Knight. Very cool. This is nice. I feel like this is one of those where, of course, the movie's great, but Mm -hmm. the importance of the movie itself, I think... Yeah is what is getting it in here, like starting a trend mm-hmm. um, and starting a, a massive sprawling franchise. So good for Iron Man. Well-deserved. Yeah. And I, I love Iron Man still. I, I yeah. It's one of my favorite MCU movies overall to this day. Um, but yeah, I, I think you're right. It, looking at Superman, right, which Superman 2, I think the Donner cut is clearly better than the original Superman, even though I do love the original. Um and like that was a big deal because it was pushing some sort of like effects at the time uh was really the first notable modern superhero adaptation and then the dark knight of course uh the thing that everybody loves to compare everything to so warranted but first a marvel film is interesting because i think you're right you nail it i don't think another mcu film would qualify for this like maybe 
you could, I would hear an argument for Endgame because it was the culmination and it's the result of everything they did. But like, I think Iron Man's a better film, so I don't know about putting that game in there. Uh, but no. is there a, a movie that stands out to you for Marvel, like modern MCU or Marvel as a whole that you think could uh, have a shot or deserves I would, to be in there? I would think, like thinking classically, maybe mm-hmm. Spider Man or Spider Man Two. Hell yeah! Potentially, just because that was at the time that and X Men were at the time where. Like you mentioned, Superman being sort of the first modern superhero movie, and I feel like those, like the X Men movie and Spider Man, Spider Man Two, were really at the time where it was like that new wave of superhero movies that started yeah. like the two thousands wave of films. So I think those, maybe not the X Men movie, but uh, I think the the, the original two Spider Man movies might be might be worthy. Um, I do. I don't know, like what the age limit or like what the um how long a movie has to be out before it could be registered here but into the spider-verse is a recent example i could think of yeah of just like an incredible story top to bottom but like just amazing animation that is completely different than anything we've seen before so that that's something i'm thinking of yeah spider-verse is a slam dunk i completely agree with you on that front um i'm sure that'll get in there eventually and i would be surprised Completely honestly, if there was another MC movie inducted into this thing, um, just based off of principle. So, sure, sure. Congratulations, Iron Man. Congratulations, John Favreau, Kevin Feige, and everybody involved in that film. Speaking of Spider Verse, do you want to save this for the end or do you want to get into. Let's, let's save this one for the end because I think it's the meatiest. Sure. Well,. Segway still works because the Spider-Verse is every adaptation of Spider-Man, Jack. True. Insomniac's Marvel's Spider-Man... No, sorry. Sony PlayStation's Insomniac's Marvel's Spider-Man 2 (laughs) has been confirmed, reiterated to be releasing in 2023, but confirmed to be fall 2023. What's your take? It makes sense considering the original Spider-Man... Insomniac game came out in September of that year. Infamously, I missed it because right. I was I was abroad, so I was not uh, playing games at the time. So I came back in December, and boy, I had a hell of a time playing that. Um, but yeah, I, I think it, it, it checks out just with games in general. I feel like I know games have been spread out a little bit better in recent years across the calendar year, but fall is still that time where like the big players are coming so mm-hmm. makes sense that and uh miles morales also came out i i think in november uh of that year alongside the ps5 yeah so in 2020 rather um so that that makes sense uh it would have been nice if this was a nice summer april game i know but yeah still nice uh to know that 2023 is still the plan um has me slightly nervous that it could get delayed since it is you know the tail end of 2023 so guess mm-hmm. we'll have to wait on that i have never been more certain about any game release in my life and you know what you can look at my track record on gamescast and see if i've said that before i'm sure i have about, <laughs> about starfield uh but just looking at what insomniac does like how they put games out the rate at which they do and i to my knowledge, at least in recent times, there's never been a announced date for Insomniac game that has slipped. And Ratchet and Clank was announced for launch window, and like I think it came out in June, so like that was pushing it. Um, but yeah, I believe them. It's New York is New York. I don't think they're going to reinvent the wheel with this game. I really think it's going to be story based combat tweaks, implementing Miles and Peter into the same game. Uh, more nitty gritty stuff uh, that they're pushing here so I buy it Um, and I'll echo what you said release timing makes sense I'm I'm worried not worried but I'm curious to see what PlayStation has for the rest of that year if they're ending with Spider-Man and that's like a game that was announced what a year ago roughly Um, 
and is the only big traditional PlayStation game announced for 2023 so far. Like there's their VR in February. Uh, they have stuff like Forspoken and Final Fantasy 16 locked in as console exclusives, but they're still coming to PC. So like curious what they're putting before this in the year, if this is potentially the thing they're ending on. So it does seem like they're making they're made up it 2023 is made up more for playstation of like third party games like you're mentioning like hogwarts mm-hmm. legacy was in that blog post yeah. of like hey here's like a, an overview of what to expect in 2023 so it seems like it'll be light on first party i know the speculation is that factions may come out next year um still waiting on that one i'm i'm not quite sure about that but i think that's kind of the rumor at this mm-hmm. point uh, is that Last of Us Factions may come out next year. Still waiting to see on that. But it does seem to be lighter, which which is fine. Like, we we had Horizon and God of War this year, and Sifu and Stray, you know, for, like, the smaller types of games. I believe those mm-hmm. were exclusive. Um, I'm trying to think of, am I missing any other PlayStation first party? Gran Turismo was this year? Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, and worth noting also... I think every single one of those games that came out in 2022 were announced for 2021 and they just ended up slipping. (laughs) So, uh, yeah, like maybe there's stuff they don't have uh, announced for next year, but we'll see. I think you're right. Uh, They've coasted on partnerships before and they probably will again because there's also potentially like very, very end of next year. We could see seven remakes sequel come out. So, right. Mm -hmm. Um, Regardless. We already talked about it, so pay attention in the future, but we're going to be doing a replay of that good old Spider-Man game. And honestly, probably Miles Morales. I haven't played that in a minute, so... Sure. Um, yeah, next year. Look forward to that in the, the summertime, Christmas in July, maybe, with Miles. I mean, yeah, uh, Get absolutely. ready for Spider-Man 2 next year. Sounds like a plan. Um, I mean... We've only been recording for 20 minutes. Is there any other stuff you want to say about Spider-Man 2? Any hopes or dreams? Oh. I, the thing I've been saying for a while, and I really want this to come true, is, and I think this could happen, and I think it probably will, is you're swinging around as Miles or Spider-Man. Uh, you're just going through a jaunt to the city, and you see something from the corner of your screen, and it's the other spider guy. And he says, hey, man, we got to go... We had to go solve this crime. Mm -hmm. And you join up. Maybe you could switch with them. I would love to do the GTA. You know, one Spider-Man is swinging on one side of the city. The other Spider-Man is swinging on the other. You just hit the down on the D-pad. You zoom out. You go to that guy. Maybe he's fighting the Rhino or something. I think that would be really fun. And I feel like the the technology is clearly there to do it. It's been done before in in GTA. Mm -hmm. And I feel like Spider-Man is probably a less demanding game than GTA in that regard. Mm -hmm. So that... That would be fun. I would much rather have that, like a more seamless transi- transition, than like you go into a subway and then you come out as the other sure. Spider Man. So that yeah. that's kind of my hope. That'd be neat. I I do think it'd be cool because, like I said, I don't imagine they're gonna expand Manhattan. Um, I imagine with the SSD, maybe they're pushing to have the entire. And they might have done this in Miles also because that was on PS Five for maybe. So maybe the PS Five version did this, but like having the entire map rendered at once at the same time constantly so that way you can toggle seamlessly between the two would be cool um i think also maybe expanding into brooklyn or queens would be cool but if we're sticking to manhattan i want like hitman levels of population density mm, yeah you know like that'd be sweet that'd be so cool or like a really refined version of that map like it's essentially yeah. google maps <laughs> of sure of manhattan because i remember watching kind of funny stream and someone like josh mahuga who had lived in new york for a while came by and he's like hey can you go down this street he's like oh yeah that's my apartment (laughs) like and i'm sure so many people did that i remember Mm -hmm. there was a really famous photo of um it was some building in spider-man and someone took a photo from their apartment and it looked exactly the same so like Mm -hmm. that level of detail is already there so just adding that extra polish just to make it like that one to one. And I know that's probably very difficult because Manhattan's yeah. huge and very dense, but mm-hmm. man, that'd be so cool. Yeah. Plus I, I can't imagine them like having to tear apart 
their island and then like stitching in other buildings is like for more space like that must be a herculean task uh i hope they get the chrysler building back because that's weird that it's gone now in miles oh right so yeah it was in spider-man 2018 and they got rid of it in miles yep i think it's in remastered i'm not 100 percent sure that is bizarre yeah sort it out was well, that well, 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 what was the pride deal do you that? have because your goddamn building <laughs> yeah like why why was that not in there like licensing rights i think it was licensing dude but like they got the empire state the chrysler building wishes they were the empire state building right come on <laughs> yeah it's weird uh, that's so weird yeah it's very strange dude you got the flat iron building as <laughs> the daily bugle they figured it out yeah i don't get it uh, but I'm very excited for that game. Uh, it's the reason I bought a PS5 is for Spider-Man 2. Um, so, uh, first party wise, but yeah, you you hoping to get any uh, face plates for that thing? I hope so, dude. Here, because like, I don't think they've done game specific face plates yet, right? No, I don't think so. And because of the whole pandemic thing and the manufacturing problems they had forever, I kind of like got over the idea of waiting to get a ps5 for a special edition because i that was my original plan because truthfully every experience i've had with it so far as like with the console and everything that's coming out before spider-man i could have waited on uh if it meant getting a special edition spider-man ps5 to match my pro but if they want to break into special faceplates, I would absolutely buy some. Get a nice uh, symbiote black and white. That would Ooh, be very clean. That would be nice. Um, in reality, I'd also take a dual sense because I feel like mine's getting a little mushy and I've only had it since like June. Um, Dude, hey, you have a year. You can send it back. I did that. Okay. My yeah, um. Well. I think there was like a spring loose in my controller and I sent it back and they just fixed it. That yeah, dude, one of my triggers has like a little clickiness to it that I that bothers me. Yeah, just set just set yourself like a 2 month deadline like a, a before you reach that 1 year warranty and send it back for free. I might do that then. Um but yeah, I would take a Spider-Man dual sense. Uh I hope it looks better than the special edition dual senses they've done so far because i've mm-hmm. not been a fan of them i don't know how you feel about those but i feel like for the most part the accessories for the ps5 have been pretty stock standard yeah um like the fa- the face plates are it's like black or i think they did like galaxy colors is the way they themed it it was like purple and red or whatever um same with the controllers i i haven't really been tempted to i got a black dual sense but that's mm-hmm. that's it i want to get uh the black uh face plates but they're like 60 dollars, so they're not quite worth it for me yeah i've thought about the maroon ones because i do like a red mm-hmm. gaming hardware setup but yeah maybe spider-man i'm sure is going to have a like a kick-ass collector's edition i would probably consider that as well true definitely so get a nice ooh, dude if that if they have like a, a nice statue like that's that's what you peter need. and miles and venom ooh, yeah that'd be it that. Well, speaking of Peter and Miles, this past week, we also got the first, I think first trailer uh, for Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. No, this is the, well, first big trailer. We've had like a teaser. Yeah, we had a teaser. Okay. I think. Then yeah, I, I guess this would be the first one. Legit trailer. Tell me if you agree. This this was surprisingly low-key for most of it. Yeah, we which i love we yeah i feel like i don't know the story of this movie which is perfect no. i don't want to know the story till i'm in the theater yeah i mean it's it's what rough i don't have it pulled up but it's roughly maybe two minutes it's, long. yeah two and a half minutes it it felt like the first 40 seconds like the first third of that trailer is really just miles having to talk with his mom which yeah. i loved i was like whoa this is not what i expected the energy to be when i clicked play <laughs> no it, it it's a really good town setting trailer like, I'm sure that's going to be the theme for most of the movie. Mm-hmm. Um, but then, of course, we get into the wackiness of, like, right the last 30 seconds of that movie of pausing every frame to see who is on, on screen. 
mm-hmm. which is great. It, it, this is a really great trailer. I think it's fantastic. Yeah, I'm very excited for this movie. I love Into the Spider-Verse like the rest of the global population. Um, and it, I, it is interesting because I think there's been enough like teases where you can understand maybe that like Spider-Man 2099 Miguel O'Hara is going to be maybe some kind of an antagonist, not necessarily a villain, but uh, scorned over something involving our protagonists, Miles, and looking like uh, Gwen Stacy. So, Um, because they got some beef. I remember that first footage, it showed the two of them, I think, like fighting through a bunch of different dimensions, right? Mm -hmm. Like Doctor Strange style in the multiverse. Yeah, yeah, they ended up in that trailer. They ended up in, I think, Spider Man India. I forget the exact like name of that character, but that universe. And it was like very different. Like the anima- animation style was like green. Like there were so many like greens and oranges around. It was, it was beautiful. So I feel like we didn't get too much of that. I think we got to look into the twenty nine ninety nine. Excuse me, the twenty ninety nine universe, um, in this trailer. And I think mm-hmm. we're gonna dip into. I think they said like we'll take a a look into like six um, different universes in this movie. Mm-hmm. So uh, we've seen like two so far. So that's cool. Yeah. Uh, it also showcases some returning characters, uh, of course, uh, Miles and Gwen, who we've expected. They were the first two characters that they really pushed with the movie, but Peter B is back. Jake Johnson, he's back. Did you expect him to be in the sequel? Yeah, I, I think so. I think that makes sense. Uh, he's got a uh, little baby carrier on his chest. Oh, yeah. He's got a kid. Uh-huh. Yeah, people are going to be swooning for Daddy Spider-Man. <laughs> for sure. You know? um, but, th- yeah, that's cute. That's a cute spin on it, um, considering his arc in the first movie. So Yeah. I- Honestly, I-, I was I wouldn't have been surprised if he didn't show up. So, like, it's a nice, pleasant thing that he's back because I really love his take on Peter Parker. I agree, and it makes me very nervous for his well-being. Very nervous. Interesting. How so? I don't want him to die. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm I'm nervous that, maybe not in this movie, but I feel like we all have such an emotional attachment to that Spider-Man. And for him, like, he went through the arc of dealing with his like personal issues and at the end clearly like his relationship with mary jane has improved um at least this trailer seems to suggest so for them to rip that away from us would be very devastating so i'm worried about that Mm -hmm. now the the big spectacle of this trailer as you alluded to was beyond the core returning trio which before we get into the big thing do you expect any of the other spider people from the first movie like penny or spider-man noir or spider ham to show up as well for like a second at least or that's a good question and i really liked all those characters i do think they'll be sidelined like maybe we'll see them in passing like oh hey good to see you but i think they'll be sidelined to have more focus on uh spider-man 2099 spider woman Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like we're already at a stacked cast with those two alongside Miles, Gwen, and Peter. So, yeah, I think they'll probably be... Uh, they won't play as big a role in this movie. Yeah, because I'm, I'm trying to think also to some of the other casting that's been announced uh, for the movie so far. Because I think Daniel Kaluuya mm-hmm. is in here as Spider-Punk, so I could see him being in the main cast yes definitely uh which is exciting i I think that would be a fun character to throw into the mix but the trailer showcases i'm just gonna guess at least a hundred spider people oh yeah uh very clear front and center we see insomniac's spider men i i have seen people say that that as in fact miles walking next to him it is just a different suit yes that how exciting is that? Yeah, <laughs> so, that's so great. like we we oh, we, you would imagine we're gonna hear Yuri, um, and I'm forgetting the actor who plays Miles in the in the games, but we gotta hear those two speak at yeah. least. Yeah, 
because it's it's too good not to be there, you know? Like because in the first movie there was uh the the suit referenced in like the hollow spider armor or whatever that was. Mm-hmm. Um but having the whole person there, you know, and also Naji Jeter is the voice yes. of Miles Morales in the games. I was um, gonna say <laughs> Jeter came to mind because of Derek Jeter. Yeah. Um mm-hmm. okay, there we go. So yeah, I think it'd be great to see I think we talked about this before, but Miles interact with another Miles instead of yeah other people affected by the spider stuff. So I think that'd be interesting. Obviously, I don't think that would bleed over into Insomniac's universe. I think that would just be self-contained for this, but... Um, Do you think we'll get a line in Spider-Man 2? <laughs> I would love that, but I don't think they would uh, tamper with that just for the sake of continuity. Or right. Something. Do you think it's maybe like the uh, another multiverse that is just kind of exactly the same as yeah maybe yeah like Insomniac. how they're treating daredevil in the mcu yeah it's like oh it's a variant but he just looks the same exactly <laughs> that, that's probably the easy the easy answer yeah but i would hope at least the duo each get a line definitely you know? definitely um you also pointed out to me a couple of things that you've noticed scouring through this and some people you've been listening to one blew my mind would you like to talk about that one yeah so this was a, a lot of people have pointed this out at at this point but uh, i was watching kind of funny's reaction to the trailer and tim gettys pointed it out at the part in the trailer where it's like the first instance where the camera or the screen cuts to black and then all the spider people are chasing miles when people are like running across like this beam or some sort of walkway it looks and it's like 99 percent confirmed that um the spider-man from neversoft's like ps1 spider-man game is in here like with the you know polygonal like blocky character art yes Ugh, that's probably the best one man i i hope my hope for that is no clue where that voice actor is these days don't even know who that was but do, do you think it was the 90s spider-man because that game was like visually heavily inspired by that cartoon it, it, it could have been and i'll look that up because i'm actually i'm curious about that myself uh-huh. um at the very least i hope they just pull a line from that game yeah. and just put it in here like uh, they've done that with a bunch of movies before i know the force awakens like pulled old out Al- alec guinness lines and like kind of mm-hmm. played around with them to make it work uh, same with uh episode nine they used like old archival footage from Mm -hmm. episode seven for carrie fisher so they just pull a line of dialogue from that game with like the old sounding bad audio quality oh that would be pretty i love that game dearly it is mounted on my bedroom wall uh it is the first game that my father bought me for a video game console and i love it i it's probably not good but it's like it's so iconic oh, it's i'm fantastic. so glad he's in there that's amazing i love that so much yeah what any uh any highlights for you um i think somebody said did you ever watch the mtv disgustingly ugly uh animated series for spider-man starring neil patrick harris as peter parker uh no i don't think i did i don't think i, I even forget heard what it was called i forget what it was called um but I watched like maybe like five episodes and it has a jarringly distinct art style to it. And I don't know if he's in there. I think he might have been uh, like I heard, I saw people say like, oh, it's blank spider with like the name of that show. Uh, and I was like, they brought they brought that in there. That's nuts. Um, if I if I could pray and hope for something, I think it would probably be the spectacular Spider-Man, which was like tail end of when i was like keeping up with cartoons and that one was just a wonderful wonderful take on peter parker Mm. that series nice but yeah i'm excited for that is it gonna be a good movie yeah um like i'm sure like just like story perspective like it's gonna be fantastic continuing on from that um and and obviously the spectacle of all the (laughs) the spider-man in there um so 
I found that the actor who played Spider Man mm-hmm. was Rhino Romano. Romano. He's a Canadian actor. Okay. Uh, he was in Spider Man Unlimited from 1999 to 2001. That might be what I'm thinking of the MTV thing. Okay. Let me see. This was not the the you know original 1990s Spider Man animated series. Oh, okay. Yeah. That ain't, that's not it. Um. Hold on, let me let me look this up. MTV Spider Man. It is a loose sequel series to the previous Spider Man the animated series. Huh. Okay, so like Batman the new animated adventures. Yes. But it seems like that cast is different. So I looked it up. Spider Man the new animated series. I believe is the name of this Neil Patrick Harris monstrosity. Okay. Uh, I'm going to send you a text of an image from this show. It's it's like 3D cell shaded, but doesn't look good. All right. Like like it feels like they adapted comic like um, style. Oh, that's bad. Yeah. That's um, like that's like what background characters in the show Invincible look like, and I really hate it. I, if you can, please look this up in motion because it looks worse in motion than it does still. What What's the name of it again? Uh, Spider Man: The New Animated Series. Oh boy. And for the video version of this, I will include this uh, screenshot that I sent you. I mean, I know exact. I saw that photo and I know exactly what what it looks like, <laughs> like without yeah. having to watch it. Uh, but I'm going to just just out of curiosity. So Neil Patrick Harris. Oh my god. Yeah, he was Peter. I'm watching this right now. Let me tell it's you. It's weird, right? It looks like, exactly jarring. Looks exactly what I thought it was gonna be like. Perfect. <laughs> and it's awful. Yeah, it's it's not not the best. This is like that stuff you watch as a kid and then you develop problems because of it and you don't really realize <laughs> what what it was all about. And uh this is one of those shows, for sure. Yeah. I think you're right. Uh, but I'm excited. It's going to be a good time. This is out when uh, next summer is that when it is now? Or did it get pushed Yeah, out? I think it's June. June cool. 2nd. Yep. Amazing. That's going to be a great time. Got to see that on a big old IMAX screen. Have a big tub of popcorn and have a fun time. For sure. You uh, you had some choice words about the PlayStation advertisement at the end of it. Yeah, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> I'm so used to that. They uh, they did that with a no, no Way Home trailer. See, but that made sense. Did it? That made that made sense because you have a Spider-Man game that you're actively promoting that came out a month before or whatever, uh, or some sometime recently. Like they're they're pushing it, they're advertising the console and the game. They weren't. This was just a, this was just a console. Wait, I want to pull up that trailer, I, Christian. I don't even think it was. <laughs> I don't even think it was buy a PlayStation Five in the No Way Home trailer. I think it was buy a Dual Sense. I could be really off on that, but I I think that's what it was. That would be better. That'd be funny if it was by tools. <laughs> I genuinely think that was the stinger at the end. Because um, like, I like I think they advertise like the Legacy of Thieves collection for an Uncharted trailer because like that makes sense. Yes, it's a Sony Pictures production. You got a Sony game coming out at the same time. You just push it, you know. Okay. But like, just buy a PlayStation. Why? At least like. Now that I'm thinking of it, when No Way Home was coming out, they weren't even pushing the Spider-Man game because that was a year before that movie came out. But they still promoted the game. Why? It, it baffles me. Why don't you just include that in there? So I've pulled up the trailer. This is the uh-huh. one from November 16th. Was there one before this? I can't quite remember. Either way. Um, this includes references to spider-man morales miles morales which includes spider-man remastered that's like the stinger at the end of that trailer and that's for no way home you said that's for no way home this is the november 16th trailer i want to see if there is so that's about a year after miles morales came out yeah 
I want to see... Okay, this is the teaser trailer now. I want... Oh, yeah, dude, this is it. <laughs> All right, the teaser trailer... The teaser trailer features an advertisement solely for the dual sense and it's really it yep i shit you not it it says heighten your senses dual sense wireless controllers for a ps5 and it's the white maroon and black controllers and this is on the new spider-verse trailer you said this no 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 this is on the no way home teaser trailer oh, okay. from august okay that yeah this is why i thought there was a an earlier trailer yeah, I'll send you a photo of this. It's ridiculous. I remember being like, like, I get that. I think PlayStation is, you know, what makes the money at Sony. Um, <laughs> but it was weird for sure. Like just the controller. I get like, you know, hey, buy our, buy our console. But buy our controller? <laughs> what? That is so strange. Because like, again, I understand it's a Sony Pictures thing. You got a you got a Sony game. You got all these Sony things cross material. But like, at least put a little effort into it. You know, <laughs> like. No, I get it. At least theme it. I get it. I understand the ad of just the PlayStation itself. But yeah, you're right. It's a clear like, hey, we got a Miles game. We got we got a Miles and a Spider Man game. Is it clear though? wasn't in the air no, no no that's what i'm saying like they <laughs> you know? they should they sh probably should have done that yeah exactly yeah for sure it's it's so weird uh this is just gonna get worse <laughs> as time goes on because we got all these cross promotions going on now but and d yeah. dude playstation and sony they have so many you know movies and tv shows coming out in like the next couple of years yeah i mean hey if it works do it i guess but i mean like when when death stranding's movie comes out there will be a stinger with the goddamn game in it you know maybe maybe <laughs> yeah, they wouldn't maybe. have learned their say? lesson by, by yeah, that i don't know man maybe not um oh, i boy. mean kudos to to sony for i mean my, microsoft buy, is buying every publisher and known to man but uh, playstation's making movies out of their known quantities like that's that's a move good for them That's really it for Marvel this week. Any other thoughts uh, come to mind about the uh, the week, the the news? I'll say next week we're going to be doing a review of the Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special, and then we're off until the new year for a heads up to everybody out there. But any final thoughts on this episode, Jack? Uh, no, looking forward to the, the Guardians review. I've seen it twice already, and I'm excited to see it again. It's nice and short. Mm -hmm. um it, it quite literally is like a, a tv show holiday special so yeah looking forward to that that'll be fun that's wonderful i haven't seen it yet i've managed to avoid it until peak holiday season there you so. go there you go well jack where can the agents of excelsior find you sure you can follow me on twitter at fascinated jack um i'm not quite sure what we have coming up soon we just released our arkham knight long play club mm-hmm so you can hear our thoughts about that. And we may have a holiday game next week. Stay mm -hmm. tuned for that. If not, we have some stuff cooked up for, for January. So uh, be, be on the lookout for those things. But what about you, Christian? Sure, you can find me on Twitter and TikTok at Chun2D2. You can find the video version of Excelsior if you want to see that Neil Patrick Harris monstrosity of an animated series uh, in the video version. You can do that youtube.com slash joyclicks in the excelsior playlist you will find all of the playlists for all of our shows that jack mentioned uh like he said check out arkham knight uh arkham origins is coming up in the near future uh likely early early next year for that episode so be tuned for that but uh if you want the audio version of excelsior you can check it out on apple Podcasts, spotify google play anywhere you listen to podcasts just look up excelsior joyclicks avengers podcast you will find us Rating and reviewing is the best way to help the show. It's completely free to do. It takes a quick second if you enjoy it. And if you want to support us further, you can do so by going to patreon.com slash joyclicks at the $1 and $5 tiers. Five bucks gets you producer credit on every show we produce, like Aaron Easton and Jose Garcia. So thank you very much. And that's it for Excelsior for 
this weekend. We'll be back with one more episode for the year. But until then, Excelsior. Thank you.